Amen, amen. If you got your teaching notes, you can grab those out of the bulletin uh, that you received as you came in here today as we are continuing our series called Gift Exchange. Today we're talking about peace. I want to ask you a question. When, when you think about something that is peaceful, would you think to yourself, what comes to my mind? What, what, what when I think of peaceful, what is an image that comes to mind? I thought about that myself. I thought, what's peaceful? What is, what is peaceful? And I thought of a sleeping baby. Don't you think a sleeping baby is peaceful? Here, see, does that not look peaceful right there? See, that, that's peaceful. All right, how about this next picture right here? See that? <laughs> see, that's just peaceful. And, and as I look at that, I think, you know, for a short period of our life when our baby, when we're a baby, we got it pretty good. For one thing, I thought you get to wear a onesie all day long, <laughs> all day long. And I communicated this envy that I have for babies and their ability to wear a onesie all day long to carry. And so one day she actually bought me a onesie. <laughs> so I have my very own onesie. Now I chose not to wear it this morning because I want to keep a job, but uh, I can sport that bad boy around my house and be comfy and cozy. But here's my guess. Some people look at that picture of that baby right there and think, I don't think I've slept like that in weeks. Maybe for some, you're thinking, I haven't slept like that in months. Years. Think, well, number one, Jeff, I don't wear a diaper. But number two, as we get a little older, have you noticed that peace can seem a little bit distant? It can be a little bit hard to find. Maybe we've got guilt and, and condemnation and worry on the inside. There's circumstances that we're facing on, on the outside. And so worry can just, and peace can feel just a little bit elusive to us. Yeah, that's where God comes in. And he says, let me, let me take your worry. Let, let me take your cares. Let me take your circumstances and let me exchange it for the peace that I can give you. Now, as we look at the Christmas story, peace is just woven throughout the narrative of, of Christmas. I think of the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 9, 6. This prophecy given hundreds of years before Jesus, it says, for to us a, a child is born, for to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called, what, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace. He, he's our wonderful counselor. That, that word, a wonderful counselor, speaks of really his sovereignty, that God is intimately aware of every detail of our life. Every detail of our life. And he will guide us and direct us as only he can. He is our mighty God. One of the great messages of Christmas is that God is mighty and he can do the impossible. He can part waters, he can feed thousands of people with a Lunchable, and he has power over human reproduction. This means that, that God can do the impossible. It means that he can provide us a job, that he can heal our broken relationships. He can touch the physical need that we have. Nothing is beyond the power of God. He's our everlasting father. I don't know what image comes to your mind when, when you think of a father. For some people, it's, they've had a good father. Others, not so much. We have an everlasting father who is loving and sacrificial and created us and believes in us. And then he's the prince of peace. Luke 2, we read of this, the same thing as, as the birth of Jesus is announced. Then there's this Beautiful song of celebration. And this was a time when, when in Rome they were going through Pax Romana, which focused on external tranquility. But Jesus then comes in and offers an inner peace that can be exchanged for the difficulties that we're facing in life. So, so what are some of these gifts that we can receive? 
these gifts of peace, would you write these down in your notes? Number one is this, we have peace with God. Peace with God. Would you raise your hand if you have ever heard of Bling H2O or Renova toilet paper? Would you raise your hand if you've ever heard of those two items? Okay, I had one person at 845 who heard of Bling H2O and nobody at 10 and nobody here, but that is about to change right now. Bling H2O, let me read an ad for Bling H2O. More than a pretty taste, Bling H2O is pop culture in a bottle. It's not for everyone, just for those that bling. Ordinary bottled water is for ordinary people. But for those who have a taste for the finer things, Bling H2O may be the perfect thirst quencher. Bottles of Bling H2O can be $50 a bottle and go up to $400 for a bottle of water. <laughs> Renova toilet paper. <laughs> Here's an ad for it. Elegant, sophisticated, rebellious, alternative, and eternally fashionable. <laughs> Black toilet paper isn't for everyone, but it is synonymous with sophistication and style. Why waste time with so last season two ply white when you can treat your tush to stylish black? <laughs> Renova toilet paper can be $15 a roll. So many people try to discover peace through materialism, through finances, through self-care, through relationships, through insulating ourselves from the world, through insulating ourselves from any bad news. Yet here is the spiritual truth. Any pursuit of peace outside of the Lord will always be temporary and superficial. It won't be a lasting peace. The, the only true peace is from peace with God. Look what the Bible says about this in the scripture. Look at Romans 15. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at the next verse right here. Now may the God of who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. Look at John right here. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Would you circle, highlight, underline the word my. My peace I give you. The peace of Christ, you guys, will never be separated from Christ himself. We will never have the peace of God until we have peace with God. It, 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 the, bo the bottom line is this. The Bible says that we've all sinned, we've all fallen short. But God sends Jesus to live and die for our sins so that we could be, would you write this word down on your note sheet somewhere, justified. It's a big fancy spiritual word, probably not gonna be a word that you're gonna use hardly ever, but it's very important for our walk with God. We are justified. We are made right because of what Christ has done for us. The Bible speaks of that in, in Romans. If you want to write a definition down for, for justification, it, it's, it's the act of being made right or justified through the finished work of Christ on the cross. I, I read here of uh, Rolls Royces are obviously pretty nice cars. I read just this last week that one individual had a Rolls Royce custom made for them. It took them four years to build. And the cost of the car was $13 million for this Rolls Royce. 
there was another individual and they had their Rolls Royce and they shipped it to Europe so they could take a vacation and drive through Europe in their Rolls Royce. They get there and the car breaks down. Something's wrong with the engine. So he reaches out to Rolls Royce and they, they fly a mechanic to where he is to fix this car. He gets to Europe, fixes the car, flies back. The guy enjoys his trip, gets home, and is thinking, I wonder how much that's going to cost me. Gets back, reaches out to Rolls Royce. How much is this going to cost me? He gets a letter from Rolls Royce, and the letter says this, Dear, dear sir, we have no record of anything ever going wrong with the Rolls Royce. It didn't cost him a penny. It was just like it never happened. And my friends, that right there is an example of justification and what Christ does for us. Man, we, we, we break down, we fall short, we sin. But then God sends Jesus, has sent Jesus to fix us, to repair us, to forgive us just as if it never happened. That is what Christ does for us. He meets us in our sin to save us from our sin. And so let me welcome you into my family. Guys, the, the greatest gift that you could give yourself this year, this Christmas season, is peace with God. That, that there's no greater gift that you could give yourself this Christmas season than a relationship with Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father. Once we have the peace with God, secondly, would you write this down? We, we have peace within ourselves. God offers us this beautiful peace within ourselves. It's possible in life to be overwhelmed by guilt and condemnation and worry and regrets of past wrongs. But because of the forgiveness of God, we don't have to live in that guilt or condemnation or worry. We are the recipients of peace. But guys, we have to receive the gift of peace that is offered to us. I want you to think for just a few moments that, that there's a friend or a loved one that you want to get a very special Christmas gift for. And you discover this perfect gift for them. And it's very expensive. In fact, you have to save for six months to buy it. I mean, it's going to cost you a lot. But it's worth it. So you save and save and save and you purchase it and you wrap this gift and Christmas morning comes and you come to your friend or family member, whoever it is, and there's, there's 20, 25 people around and you can't wait for your friend or relative to receive this gift, to open this gift. The moment's right. And you take this gift and you set it on their lap and you say, I've sacrificed a lot. I've saved for six months. It's cost a lot. But I want you to receive this gift. And they look and they say, thank you. Thank you so much. As they sit the gift next to them and they don't open it. How ticked are you? <laughs> Am I talking? Don't you think, open it. It's very nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You leave, and they haven't opened that gift. It's sitting there. You come back in July for a summer barbecue, and guess what? It's still sitting there. Now you're raging. Are you raging? You're raging. You know what that cost me? And you, you're not going to open it? You don't let it just sit there? And all of a sudden now, the recipient's refusal to open the gift hurts the heart of the giver. 
And I think in some ways that's maybe a semi-good illustration of God has offered us peace on the inside. Through his death on the cross, through his perfect sinless life, he says, I want to give you peace. You don't got to live in regret or guilt or, or condemnation. I want you to experience peace. But guys, we have to receive it. We have to receive the gift that God has given us. And you're like, well, Jeff, how? How? How do I do that? I want that feeling on the inside. I don't want to be bound by guilt and worry and regret, but how? Would you write this down on your note sheet somewhere? Here's what I think is so important for this very point. It's this. We experience peace as we internalize gospel truth. As we internalize gospel truth. Well, what do I mean by that? When we're tempted to feel guilty for past wrongs, condemned for past wrongs, overwhelmed by past wrongs, we go to the gospel, we go to the word of God that says we are forgiven, that says that we're made right, that says he removes our sins from us as far as the east is from the west, and we just, just really just allow that scripture to speak to our heart, and this truth that we proclaim for our life leads us to the feeling of peace on the inside. When we're tempted to feel overwhelmed by circumstances. Just this past year, Carrie had surgery. And we were right there in the, in the, the waiting room, waiting for her to wheel, be wheeled back to surgery. And, and I'm sure you've been there before where, where the anesthesiologist is there. And they're getting ready to, you know, put in the IV and give you all the stuff you need. But they have to go through all the list of all the things that might possibly happen to you during this surgery when you get this anesthesia, right? It's okay, you, you're gonna go blind and deaf and mute, be paralyzed and most likely die, but just sign here. <laughs> right on, let me say goodbye to my wife. But what? A friend of Carrie's had said this very quote, Carrie, peace is there. Peace is available. We just have to receive it. We just have to receive it. As we internalize gospel truth. So we got peace with God, God offers it. We got peace within ourselves as we internalize gospel truth. And then number three, here's the byproduct, here's the challenge, here's the, oh no he didn't, peace with others. God offers us peace with others. The Bible says in, in Romans, as far as it depends on you live at peace with everyone. Everyone. That's tough, right? I mean, I didn't write it. See, so often we think, okay, yeah, if it's possible, as far as it depends on them, I'm gonna live at peace with most people. But God says, no, as far as it depends on you, do as much as you possibly can do. Live at peace with everyone. And that even means Uncle Johnny, who you're gonna see at Christmas. You're gonna be at peace. I, I just think such a powerful scripture is Ephesians 4 where it says, be kind and compassionate, forgiving others, just as in Christ God forgave you. The, the, the challenge of that, I think, is the part where it says, just as in Christ God forgave you. Because now, I have to forgive others, not in the manner I would like to forgive them, but I have to forgive others the same way that I've been forgiven. 
immediately without stipulation. And that this is the goal, this is the challenge, that we who have been recipients of peace would be dispensers of peace. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me here? This morning, I just wanna ask, what's the Lord just speaking to your heart about here today? Maybe another way to ask it is, what, what's the peace step that you need to take? Maybe you're here today and you're thinking, Jeff, I, I need peace with God. I wanna give myself that gift here today. If that's you, would you just, I'm not gonna ask you anything weird or crazy or anything. I just wanna know who I'm praying with and for. Would you just slip up your hand if you're saying, Jeff, I want that peace. Would you raise it right now? I wanna commit or recommit my life to Jesus. Yes, thank you. I see all those hands. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Amen. Come on. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You can put those hands down now, guys. Hands just across the place. And I want to invite you that, that raise your hands. Would you just, in your heart of hearts, would you pray this prayer? Would you just say, Jesus, would you come into my heart? Would you forgive me for my sins? Today, I commit my life to you. Today, I receive your gift of grace, your gift of peace. Today, I turn over the reins of my life to you. I want to be a new creation. I want my name written in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, can we give a wild applause to all those who just <laughs> took that step? And guys, here's, here's, a, here's, here's what I want to just encourage and speak into us. Because of what Christ has done, we can walk in peace. We don't need to walk in guilt. We don't need to walk in condemnation. We can walk in peace. And so when, when, when we're tempted this next week to feel guilty or condemned, let's go to the Word of God, go to the Word of God, stand on that truth, and allow that to lead us to the feeling of peace. Amen?